Praise the Lord. Yeah. <clears throat> Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. I'd like to call the regular meeting of the Board of Fire Commissioners for Bonita Springs Monday, May 9, 2022, to order. Chaplain Chitwood. We'd like to have a moment of silence for nine firefighters for the month of April across the United States. Dear God, we pause to give honor to those who have made a sacrifice in the service of others. We pray, Lord, that you'll be with the families of these that are lost, that you'll give them comfort and strength and watch over them. And Lord, as always, we pray for protection for our firefighters as they serve and help others. Just surround them and watch over them, take care of them. And Lord, we thank you for just the privilege of uh, freedom that we have and the ability to meet in places like this. And other places in the world don't have that, and Lord, sometimes we forget that, take it for granted, but we just give you thanks for that tonight. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Any public comment on agenda items? Seeing none, we need a motion for the approval of the April 2022 meeting minutes. So moved. Seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 April 11th, 2022 regular meeting minutes motion. What was, what was the other one? I'm sorry, I, I just noticed that we had two meetings and it didn't say what that meetings, the other meetings were was for. It's a budget. Shade, hmm? Budget. Was it Executive shade? meeting. Shade it says regular minute meetings, and then the other one says meeting minutes. We did the hyperlink in the wrong area. Are they the same, same thing? Same one, same one. Okay, we already did that. I yeah, thought the shade so. meeting was last month. Right. Yeah, I, that's right. That makes sense. I need a motion, a one motion for the April 2022 and current expenditures and ACH payments, the acknowledgement of financial reports, and the acknowledgement of wire transfers and transfers between accounts. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Commissioner's business. Anybody have anything they'd like to say? Nope. No, sir. No, sir. No, I have nothing. Moving on. Presentations. Chief. So tonight, um, we have a special presentation for Lieutenant Richard Lanza. He's completed 20 years of service here with the Benita Springs Fire Department. You know, in the past, we've talked about uh, when we give these presentations, I go in their file and I look at their... Uh, their performance reviews and so on. So I went there today and looked at it, and you know what? I, I decided to do something a little different this time. I decided to go from my heart and talk about Rich a little bit, because you know Rich was one of my firefighters uh, when I was on shift, and um, I seen him progress up through the, through the ranks. And so what I like to say about Rich is a few things. You know, he's a paramedic, CPR instructor, uh, his fire officer two, he's got his fire service instructor three, he's a hazmat coordinator, incident safety officer, he's got his bachelor's degree. Um, in October, he'll be a lieutenant, he will have been a lieutenant for 15 years. Wow. So, you know, considerable time being a lieutenant, great guy. Uh, brief stint, when the department needed someone to step up, he stepped up and became a training captain for a few months while we were out looking for our two new training captains. So, you know, the one thing, uh, the other thing I will say, he's been an acting BC since since uh, 2018. So one thing that always comes to mind when I when I think about Rich and talk about uh, Lieutenant Lanza is loyalty, dedication, service above all. So I'd like to thank Rich for 20 years of uh, dedicated service and at least another 10 or 15. I think he's got left in him. So congratulations, hey, Rich. To Chief, if I may, uh, yes. Excuse me. I just want to add. I've I've seen him working, and I, I mentioned it to the board at a major major incident. And he was acting battalion chief and, and handled it without any problems. I was there for the whole thing. Great. It was nice to see everybody working Good. together.
Congratulations from us. Yes. Yeah, congratulations. Do you want me to take a recess so that we can leave after the awards so you don't have to stay for the whole meeting? Um, otherwise, everybody's welcome to stay, but you good? All good? Okay. Any old business? You got anything? Nope. Anything on those bids or no? We're still waiting on that uh, on the bids when you're referring to the station, uh, the apron behind station one and mm -hmm. the or station uh, two and the roof. Still waiting on GMA to come back with some light numbers before we talked about they had given us a price and the price I felt was too high, and especially if we weren't even sure if we could do the work yet. So they are still going back to the actual engineering and architectural firm and saying, hey, can we just look at it on a per diem basis rather than uh, a contract basis. So he has not gotten back to me on that. Okay. I just wanted to check in on that. Anybody else have anything that they can think of they want to talk mm -hmm. about under old business? Nope. New business. Our audit presentation. Jeff Brown is here. Showtime. <laughs> Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Um, Thank you. For the record, Jeff Brown with Ashley Brown and Smith CPAs here to do a brief presentation for your fiscal year 2021 audited financial statements. Um, feel free to interrupt me as I, I go along if you got anything. Uh, the first couple things is uh, on pages one and two. This is our independent auditors report. Um, it, the bold headings there kind of outline what your responsibility is as the district, what our responsibility is as your auditor. And then on page two is where you get the opinion part. And that basically, it's what we call an unmodified, unqualified opinion, basically means that the financial statements as they were prepared by your staff are in accordance with governmental accounting standards as they're required to be. Um, we didn't have any issues that we identified during the audit process. Uh, everything was just as it was needed to be, so we appreciate their professionalism That's and wonderful. expertise That's with wonderful. that. Absolutely, yes sir. Shout out, Lisa. Nice job. <clears throat> um, on page three starts the management's discussion and analysis. And I encourage you to kind of flip through this. It provides a nice overview of the financial highlights for, the, it kind of compares 2020 and 2021. There's some charts and graphs and things in there. It's in a narrative format. It's kind of easy to read and it provides a nice brief overview. Well, it has pictures, so we're There's good. pictures, exactly. <laughs> And then the boring part starts on page nine, where you get a lot more numbers and a lot less words and no pictures. Um, but on page nine is the statement of net position. So the purpose of this statement is to report all of the district's assets and liabilities as of that snapshot date of September 30th, 2021. Um, there's a number down there at the bottom that I'll kind of refer to a couple times as we go through here, but that total net position, negative 1.1 million, um, that number was positive last year, so if, if you just look at that, it doesn't necessarily look the best. It's, it means that our liabilities are in excess of our assets, but it's a little bit misleading, so I'll kind of explain that a little bit as we go along. Please. Um, sure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if you flip over to the next page, page 10 kind of shows you how we got here. So it starts with expenses. Now, this being what we call full accrual accounting. So this has to do, this isn't, this isn't necessarily just cash checks that you wrote during the year. This is the big thing being the pension, other post-employment benefits, some of these actuarially calculated liabilities. In accounting world, to make a liability go up, you have to record an expense. So that's essentially what's happening to that net position. If you look at the third line from the bottom, it says that you're, net position decreased by almost $12 million. Well, that's why you got that negative 1 million on the first page there. Last year, it ended at 10.7. You had an $11 million reduction, if you will, where expenses exceeded revenues, but most of that is actuarially determined, which I'll show you here in a second too. Um, if you flip to page 11, these are more of 11, and we'll do 11 first. Um, this is the modified accrual basis of accounting. So this has, this doesn't have trucks, buildings, and those types of assets, nor does it have 
the actuarially calculated liability. So it just has accounts payable, normal operational kind of expenses. So you can see here, the district is financially sound. Um, the first column there, it breaks out the general fund and the impact fee fund. But you can see here, you've got fund balance of 18 million between the two. So there, it's- Excuse me, what, yes, what, what do you call this when you don't have the trucks and all that vehicles in here? That's modified accrual modified basis accrual. Accrual. Okay. Okay. And it's specific for governmental accounting. Thank you. Yes, sir. <clears throat> um, if you turn over to page 13, this is, it's titled Statement of Revenues, Expenditures, and Changes in Fund Balances, but it also serves as like a, a net income statement or a profit and loss statement. It's similar to that first one where it shows you revenues ex and expend. Ex this one uses the word expenditure, which is different than expense. So here you've got really three big categories of ex expenditures, personal services, operating, and capital, and you can see that number is 26 million, 26.5 million, and then right above it for the general fund was the total revenue was almost 28 million. So you didn't, you collected more than you spent, that is all, but when you get into those actuarial things, that's where the numbers get a little funky, if you will. So that, that's why there's two sets of basically financial statements in here, so you can kind of see what we call the old state, the old governmental accounting statements, which was more, not cash basis, but kinda. And then the other one is this full accrual concept. Um, if you turn all the way back to page 31. <clears throat> so this is a schedule of the district's long-term liabilities. So this is kind of the big crux of what happened in 2021. And I'll also say that when I come back, come back next year, this thing's gonna completely flip around because of this actuarially calculated liability. So if you look at the, that net pension liability, so we started on 10-1 of 20 with a $22 million liability number. We ended the year with 27 million. Lisa and I were talking, I think the new number is gonna be like 16 million or 18 million or something like that. So this thing was here, it went way up, it's gonna come way back down. So if you look at it over the two year, you kind of have to look at the two years together to kind of get the real picture of what it is. But when accountants and actuaries, when we do things, we have to cut it off at a particular point in time. That's just how the math works. So that's, it, it is a liability. I don't mean it to sound that it's not, but it's calculated based off of a lot of different assumptions, primarily being the stock market returns on investments and things like that. So when you see the one next time, it's basically gonna have corrected itself. Um, crazy. The only other that, that's other. assuming that we don't have a stock market crash in that period, is, is that safe what, to say? What do you mean, it's already, right? over, see the, you wanna tell me? Yeah. Okay. The, um, the actuarially calculated liability is actually calculated a year ago, so you're able to use that report for like two, so, that number was really the 2020 number, but you use it in the 2021 financial statement. But actuaries base everything on a 99-year term. Accountants have to do it year to year. Correct. And, and it's like those numbers just don't match. They don't. And, it, and they even put in the report, like, if, if you assumed a 8% return of investment, a 9%, and the numbers are, when you extrapolate them out far like that, I mean, even something being different a half a percent or 1%, makes a huge difference. But then you have smoothing. Exit, there you go. And then you use words like that, and then <laughs> makes it, all it makes everything okay. So. Um, the other thing where we look at from the audit standpoint, standpoint is budgets. Um, obviously, we want to make sure that you didn't overspend your budget. So on page 59 is a summarized schedule of revenues and expenditures, and about two-thirds of the way down the page, there's a line that says total expenditures, and if you look all the way over to the right, the budgeted were, um, were your, you had a positive variance of 15.5 million, and that's the biggest piece of that is there's some contingencies and things in there that you budget for that you just didn't obviously have to spend money for, so, but the point is, from a legal standpoint, you do not overspend the budget. Um, <clears throat> there's a couple other reports in here from us. To you, back on page 83, is our independent audit report on internal control over financial reporting and compliance. And if you turn over to page 
84, oh, hold on, I'm sorry, 80, leave it on 83. The last sentence there states that uh, we did not, during our audit, we did not identify any deficiencies in the internal control that we consider to be material weaknesses. And then in com under, on the next page, under compliance and other matters, uh, the results of our audit test disclosed our, the results of our test disclose no instances of noncompliance or other matters that are required to be reported under government auditing standards. Uh, and then on page 85 is our report to you as management. Um, there's references in here to uh, Florida statutes, rules of the Auditor General, but they're all positive statements. You're in compliance with everything that you were required to be. Uh, we did not have any current audit findings, no prior audit findings that you needed to correct or address. So again, all positive statements. So. With that, I'd be happy to answer any questions you have. Yeah, I just wonder, um, what could happen that would cause this thing to be not kosher? What could happen in the c country that would hurt this uh, district, fire district? Oh. Any? I, I, no. a, a depression, would, would that do it? Probably not, because I mean, you're just gonna like every every you business, everything. you're gonna adjust, yeah. right? Yeah, and I mean, and one of we do look at that, but we're more looking, and probably as you do too. Like, are we gonna make it another year, six months, three months, five years, ten years? So you have all these plans that are obviously constantly changing, but um, but I mean, you have that was that first schedule, the fund balances and things like that. I mean, you have cash carry, you got enough cash to operate to where if there was something that. For whatever reason, people didn't pay their taxes and you didn't get money from the tax collector at the beginning of the year, maybe it took a w whatever, you have cash on hand to, to kind of survive or operate for a period of time. Good. So it wouldn't be something I would say that's going to happen and then we have a serious problem next week. I'm glad you brought that up because there are a lot of people out there who don't want to pay taxes because of the way things are going. And you never know. I mean, it's, it's I mean, you get most of your money at the beginning of the year, yep. but that doesn't mean it's always that way, yeah. I guess, right? Thank you. Yes, sir. Nice job. Nice job. Thank, uh, thank you, know, you thank very you. much. And if there's ever anything else we can help you with, you know, reach out to Lisa or the chief. We're, we work for you. We're here to help. So. Thank you, buddy. Okay, thank work you. on thank the you. pension. <laughs> <laughs> Chairman, we need a vote to accept this. Hmm? We need a vote to accept. Okay. So move. Second it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Uh, next item is resolution 2022-0501. If uh, Commissioner Murphy would... Be kind enough to read that into the record. Yes, sir. Uh, might be a little slow without my glasses, but I'll get it done. You want me to hold it over here for you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, stand over here. Virginia Springs Fire Control and Rescue District Resolution 2022-5-1. Whereas Benita Springs Fire Control and Rescue District, as established by the Florida Legislature pursuant to Chapter 98-464 Laws of Florida, and whereas Florida laws provide for the election of members to specific terms and seat numbers for the Board of Fire Commissioners of Benita Springs Fire Control and Rescue District and calls for the election of three members of the Board Commissioners of said district for seats numbered and length of term. Seat number one, length of term four years. Seat number three, length of term four years. Seat number five, length of term four years. Now therefore, be it resolved by the Board of Commissioners of the Benita Springs Fire Control and Rescue District that, Section 1, there is hereby called an election of the County of Lee, State of Florida, to be held on November 8, 2022, for the purpose of having all qualified elector resi electors residing within the boundaries of the district to determine the members to serve on the Board of Commissioners of said district. Section 2. FS 99.061. The period of qualifying for a candidate for commissioner to the district shall be from noon, June 13th, 2022, to noon, noon June 17th, 2022. Candidates may begin pre qualifying on May 30th, 2022. Section 3, FS 100.011. FS 101.151. 
Said election shall be conducted according to the requirements of the general law and the laws governing special district elections. The election shall be held at a polling places and early voting sites designated by the Supervisor of Election of Lee County, Florida. The polls and early voting sites shall be opened and closed as provided by law. The ballots to be used in said election shall contain the names of the qualified candidates to be voted upon as provided by law. Section 4, FS 100.021. The Department, shall, uh, Department of State shall, in any year in which the general election is held, make out a notice stating that the officers and vacancies within those offices to be filled at a general election in the state and in each county and district thereof. During the 30 days period prior to being qualified, beginning of qualifying, the Department of State shall have the notice published two times in the newspaper of general circulation in each county. Section 5, SS 100.011. The opening and closing of polls and costs for said election shall be provided under the Florida law. Mr. Chairman. Now we need a, now we need a motion to, uh, to accept this resolu so resolution. Moved. I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Duly passed and adopted the ninth day of May 2022 by the Board of Fire Commissioners of Bernice Springs Fire Control and Rescue District. Done. Nice job. Okay, thank you, sir. All right. What do we got? Um, budget calendar. Budget calendar. Has everybody looked at that? And just, anybody uh, have any problems with the dates? The only one that do we have to decide though? Is a three-day span there? Do we have to decide that one in September? Now, Lisa, do you want to wait till later on? Or I think we have to wait only till we, we see. Can't wait. I don't do know do you want to wait, or do you? Yeah, does, okay. I don't know when the school board or the right. city. Okay. Well, that, uh, that's what I thought, but so it, we you know, otherwise we could we could just wrap it all up now. Anybody have any problems <clears throat> with the budget calendar? Nope. No, sir. Well, let's uh, motion to accept that. Motion to accept. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Chief, you're up. All right, I just have a few things uh, to remind you and get some uh, clarification on. Uh, May 11th, this Thursday at the Shangri La is business after hours, 4 to 6. So if anybody would like to go, I know Commissioner Lohan's expressed interest. What uh, was that again? Business after hours, this uh -huh. Thursday at when, the Shangri La. It's Wednesday, isn't it? Or Wednesday, I'm sorry, Wednesday. Yeah. Oh, I apologize. Wednesday. May 11th. Well, it's usually on Thursday. I know it is. Yeah, yeah they changed it they this month. The it is Wednesday this year. So if you'd like to go, please let Anna Marie know as soon as possible. Uh, along with that, Chamber is having the incredible awards. It's a luncheon at the Hyatt on the 25th of May. Uh, it's at 11.30. So just, again, let us know that. Uh, if you noticed all the cars out back, uh, we're having extrication training on the 23rd and 24th having a team come over from Miami. If you remember, uh, last year we had our team compete in the Nationals. So the um, team is coming over from Miami-Dade to teach uh, all of Southwest Florida and a few from Sarasota and Northport area to come down and see what they're looking for in these competitions. So we're going to have them here for two days. That, that's the 23rd, 24th of May? <laughs> of May, yes. Mm -hmm. Uh, June, just a reminder, June 6th is our next meeting. It's early because of the FASD conference it's the following week. the first week. Monday instead of the second. First the first Monday. Monday. Uh, just to bring everybody up to date, uh, we had a, a truck meeting today with the vendor. So the truck is being ordered. We looked at all the specs. Uh, we made a few changes on it. Shouldn't affect the price. But right now, our first trip up is sometime October, November, with the final being December or January, most Thanks. likely January. It's new. Beautiful. You'll be able to stand out. Uh, reminder uh, that we're going out to bid uh, sometime this month for the sprinkler system. Every 20 years we have to uh, redo the sprinklers or have a majority of them sent in to, to have them recertified, uh, especially with the ones in the bay. Over the last two or three years they've mentioned that the ones in the bay are looking corroded, looking nasty. So we made the decision just to go ahead and we budgeted for it to replace them all. So that's going out to bid. What, would that be in this year's budget? It would be in this year's budget. We already budgeted yeah, and moved it forward yeah, okay. this year. Uh, after talking to the fire marshal and myself, uh, we think it's going to be less than $50,000, so it doesn't have to be sealed bid. 
So we are uh, putting that out probably in the next week or two, sir. That's for all the stations? No, just this just station. This then the next uh, next one I think coming up would be station two, then five, but there's still a couple, two or three years before that, so we've got time to budget for those. Well, this will be the most expensive one. Yes, anyway. yes. Uh, we figured somewhere in the thirty-five to forty thousand dollar range is what we're figuring right now, at most. Yes, sir. When you finish, oh, with I got one more. Okay, good. Uh, then the last thing to remind everybody on is this uh, Saturday is our awards banquet, <laughs> Roaring Twenties for. Some, maybe Commissioner uh, Casilla, that would be his teenage years. But for the rest of us, it's <laughs> Warren Trump 20s. <laughs> what are you laughing? So, you, <laughs> so, you know, you your, prom, me. your prom outfit would maybe be, uh, You'd be uh, surprised. <laughs> maybe uh, suitable for that, but uh, I'll send you pictures. That's, just, that's this Saturday. I'll send you pictures. From 6 to 8 at Artichoke. The only yeah. thing I want to comment on is that it's well deserved. Everybody on this department does an incredible job, and my apologies that I'm going on vacation. I'm leaving that morning, and we're going to be gone for 17 days. We go that time every year. Been planned for a long time, and I'm sorry I'm going to miss it, but have a beer for me or something, okay? <laughs> Thanks. Chief, how's that uh, uh, volunteer fire department um, that we donated our uh, fire truck too. It, it's doing good at uh, Washington. It's Alfred and uh, Delwood. Uh, both of them are doing well. As far as I've, I've talked to uh, their representative through the Florida uh, Fire Chiefs Association. He said they are loving it. Uh, no problems, no issues with it, and they thank us every day. They can't get their money back if they exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm not going up to get no refunds. <laughs> Mr. That's Priscilla, it. Did you have you, something? No, you, you answered my question. Okay. Thanks. And that's it, sir. Anybody else over here at this table have anything they'd like to add? Yes, Thank you for the reports. Nice job. Alex, you're up. Uh, this is just Alex Grant. Uh, I'm still concerned about there's uh, this guy Vladimir Putin in Russia and what he might do since I don't believe he's mentally stable and the war in there in Ukraine is not going very well for him. All due respect, we've yes. had this conversation that this has well, got I mean, to be fire department business, I, public I, input, the not world politics. fire department business is... Please. Please, yes. If he were to do something very stupid, like decide to drop a couple of nuclear weapons... Well, what Florida, does this, right now, what does that have to do with us? I, I know, but I just want to offer my help oh, to gonna, the inter department. Inter intercept the missiles? <laughs> All right, Alex, thank, thank you. No. Yes, I, I, we'll get, we'll I'm, get going to, I'm offering you my help. Okay, no chance. Uh, I'm worried about the water. Should there be... Uh, radiation Thank you. fallout in this area. Chairman, uh, just, so, just so the board knows, myself and uh, Chief Broad, Assistant Chief Broad met with, uh, with uh, former Councilman Grant, and uh, we've talked about it, and we've got everything in place through the state warning point and through uh, local and state assets as far as radiological and biological. Okay, so, that, so, just that, so, that, so, so that's the settled now. We, we've got, we've got a protocol in place, so we don't need to talk about this anymore. We don't need to talk. I, I, I'm yours for that. Thank you so much. Thank you. Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Thanks for coming. <laughs> 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 <laughs>